Berkeley. Berkeley Art Rangers. Art Rangers Berkeley. I have gifted my godson a set of these on his birthday and I think he's loving it. Hi there again everyone, this is again Alan and welcome back to my watercolor channel. Today in this video, we are going to be having a double content. Yes, double content because we are going to be reviewing the Berkeley watercolors and at the same time, we are going to be comparing it to its rumored to win brother, the Art Rangers watercolors. I got the set at M. Enrique's art supplies shop at Shopee Philippines for 161 Philippine pesos and I ordered this on May 1st and it arrived the next day. So now let's first check the box. So it says here Berkeley, it's the line name for studio it says here and we have here watercolor and other languages. So it says here higher color strength than conventional watercolors rich luster pigments for intense bright colors resistant to cracking and flaking certified approved safety ap seal no lead content non-toxic so this is safe for kids on this side it says also again berkeley watercolor and we have here a preview of uh, the swatch colors and at the back we have here again, of course, the Berkeley 12, 12 ml troops, just like what's stated here. I forgot to show you a while ago. And here we have an introduction about the paints. Um, finished works can be kept and stored for a long time without cracking and flaking. So he's saying here that the finished works are the ones which are not gonna crack and flake. I thought the paints. <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's certified approved safety AP seal, no lead content non-toxic so it's just repeating what it's said here and here we have a preview of the color selected we have here the swatches and the color names are stated in five different languages so now here they provided the details of the distributor which is the M Enriquez art supply and now I think it's obvious that they just sourced the paints from a uh, paint manufacturer from China because it says here made in China so here we have the logos, the certifications. Now let's quickly compare our Berkeley box with the Art Rangers box. You know, the format, the layout is just very similar, but in Art Rangers, they did not include the bulleted information here. And on this side, let's see. Okay, so they have here the same design for the swatches. Also, they have here the line name watercolor line name watercolor but here it seemed like they covered something and on this side art rangers provided the contact or email of the uh, maggie wap the makers of these paints same 12 12 art ranger watercolors berkeley watercolors so just the same information but we have more information for art ranger so now let's see the bottom the bottom is just the same also so now let's see the back. So I think now again we have the same format. We have 12, 12 ml tubes, Art Ranger, Berkeley watercolor, an introduction, the preview of the colors included. Even the color names are just the same, both translated in five different languages. But in Art Rangers, they provided a preview of the tubes. In Art Rangers, they covered something here, and both are made in China. Now, just looking from the box, I now have a stronger feeling that they're just the same paints. But of course, we have to check the contents. So now let's reveal our paint set. So the paints are placed in a tray that is covered with plastic. I don't have my palette knife with me here. So now they're placed again in another tray. This is a uh, transparent flimsy plastic tray now let's check an individual tube so the tubes are made out of plastic with plastic cap and here we have a W I think W stands for watercolors and here it says watercolor and we have here the color name in five different languages and here it says 12 ml 0.4 US fluid ohms and other than that we don't have any other information about the paints no light fastness code no pigment code so now let's quickly compare it with the art rangers tubes and i'm not actually surprised they're obviously just the same tube paints because we have the same design and uh, 
careful not to mix it up because you won't recognize already which is which because they're obviously just the same tubes now let's have a closer look because i can't get over our discovery our confirmation okay so here is the berkeley watercolors and here is the art ranger watercolor set they are just the same tube design what else do we need to prove of course we need to see if they have the same content now to test our two paints out we are going to be doing our swatches and sample painting and for this i'm using as always arches 185 gold press cotton paper and for the brushes we have here the royal aqualon 2150 and also we have here the escoda reserva brush size 2 so as you can see their tubes have this aluminum foil cover to protect the paints you have to remove this of course to get your paints now to save time let's dot down our paints so for this color the crimson red we have binder pigment separation issue but not really that bad we also have binder pigment separation for ultramarine and what you can do for things like this you can mix it with a needle or a toothpick because we cannot throw away all our binders because if we do that our paints might not adhere well on uh, our paper and also they are more risk to cracking and drying out same issue with deep green I think the binder separation happens only in the upper part of the tubes because the binder tends to go up also happens with burnt sienna I also have dotted down the paints that I will be using for our sample painting and I'm happy to discover that there are no binder or pigment separation already. So let's start with white. So of course this is expected to be opaque and yes it is opaque. Then we have uh, lemon yellow. Next we have yellow ochre. Now we have vermilion and it's very vibrant. Next we have crimson red. And just like the vermilion, the crimson red is also very vibrant. Next we have ultramarine blue. The ultramarine blue is really deep but I'm not seeing granulation here. The colors in our first row have a different intensity. The last three colors are very saturated. All of them are leaning towards the uh, transparent side except for the lemon yellow and the white of course. Surprisingly the yellow ochre is also semi-transparent. Next we have Prussian blue and this is also very saturated. Next we have deep green and just like in the art rangers this doesn't look deep green it just looks like a mid green next we have grass green and this looks like a sap green now we go to the earth colors and this is their burnt sienna I think this is also very saturated next is burnt umber and lastly we have black now while we are waiting for our swatches to dry, let's first do our sample painting. And for this, I've chosen to redo the sample painting that we did for the Art Rangers watercolors. And this is for us to compare the two sets easier. And uh, I'll be speeding this up to save time. So if you have any questions, please let me know at the comments section. So let's begin.
Now our sample painting is finally dry, we can now remove our tape. And let's have a closer look. For our color selection, I can say that this is not the most standard but it is acceptable. Instead of a warm yellow, they have here a white which is very useful especially for the kids for color mixing. Also I'd be happier to see a thalo blue and a thalo green instead of the Prussian blue and the deep green because I believe those two colors are more effective in color mixing. The ultramarine does not granulate and that gives me a hint that this may not be pigment based, they may be ink based. When it comes to the vibrant and saturation of the colors I think they're vibrant enough for the price I think they're saturated but I don't feel that they are very pigmented of course we cannot expect very pigmented paints from the price range of these paints and just like the art rangers watercolors the intensity of the colors is enough for you to make some decent paintings mixability is not its strength but it's very manageable as well as its flow I think the Berkeley watercolors is best used in washes, not so much with full strength because if you use it in full strength, there's a tendency that you get this texture. Let me zoom it nearer. It's not easy to uh, make it even. So as you can see in my sample painting, almost everything is in very thin washes. And in these 12 colors, I find that most of the colors are transparent except for the lemon yellow and of course the white. Also the deep green is not very transparent and that is very understandable for the price range of these paints. Now let's see if these paints are chalky by rubbing some sheets of napkin and if we get pigments in our paper that means these paints can be chalky. So as you can see, we did not get any powder marks or uh, pigments, colors in our paper. So that means the Berkeley watercolors are not chalky. The texture, the vibrancy, the saturation, the overall character, even the tube design is very similar with the Art Rangers watercolors. Therefore, I can now believe that the Berkeley watercolors and the Art Rangers watercolors are just the same paints. Now for our favorite portion, let's now go to the comparison portion. And let's begin with a set of paints that are less performing as compared to the Berkeley watercolors. Let's start with the Maggie Wap Basics watercolors. We also have the Sakura Koi Pocket Field Sketchbox, the Sterling Arts watercolors, the Symbolion watercolors, the Dong A Creative, the Best Buy watercolors, the Giorgioni watercolor cakes, the Reeves watercolor, and the Faber Castell solid watercolors. Now let's proceed to these student grade paints that are very much comparable to the Berkeley watercolors. Let's start with the Lefranc and Bourgeois Louvre watercolors, the Pebeo Studio watercolors, the Faber Castell in tubes, the Marie's watercolors in tubes, the Marie's watercolors in half pans, and the Prang watercolors. Now I know you are wondering, Prang watercolors comparable to Berkeley? Yes, the texture of Prang is really much better but the intensity of the Berkeley watercolors I think is on par and at some point some of the colors are even better. But if you had to choose, okay this is a bonus tip, I would still choose Prang of course. Now these two next set of paints are the most comparable paints with the Berkeley watercolors. Let's begin with the Pentel watercolors. Fine, I think they're very comparable. The colors of the Pentel are much brighter, more saturated, but the texture is very much the same. But if I had to choose, I still think Pentel is a bit better because of its vibrancy. And of course, the most comparable paints are the Art Rangers watercolors. So let me just uh, zoom it nearer so you can see they're just the same paints color selection wise and the intensity of the colors even the hues are very much the same. Now the next set of paints that we are going to be showing are the set of paints that are better performing as compared to the Berkeley watercolors. So let's start with the better student grade paints. Let's have the Kure Take Gansai Tambi 
the Simi Art Solid Watercolors 50s, the Simi Arts Arts Arch Watercolors, the Simi Art Semi Dry Watercolors, the Owen Watercolor Cakes, the Owen Watercolors in Metal Case, the Pretty Excellent Watercolors, the Koinur and the Linky Brilliant Watercolors, the Ink Based, the Pelican Transparent Watercolors, the Miyahimi Solid Watercolors, the Superior Foldable Palette Watercolors, the Superior Watercolors in Pans, and the Superior Fan Palette. And these next set are our higher student grade paints. We have the Grumbacker Academy, the Windsor in Newton China, the Windsor in Newton Cutman, the Sonnet Watercolors, the Van Gogh 20 New Colors, the Van Gogh 12 Plus 3 Half Pan Set, and the Kukuyo Kamlin Caramel Watercolors from India. And our final set are our artist grade paints. Of course, these paints are a lot better as compared to Berkeley watercolors because these are professional grade paints and they offer all the information that we need the light fastness rating, the pigment coats, and all. So, this is just for the visual comparison. Let's begin with the Lucas Aquarel 1862, the Espanoleto Aquarela. We also have the Prima Marketing Tropicals, the Mungio Professional Watercolors, the Mary's Masters Watercolors, the Paul Rubens Watercolors, the Blocks Extra Fine Watercolors, the White Knights Pans, the White Knights in Tubes, the Isaro Extra Fine Watercolors, the Utrecht Watercolors, Rembrandt Luxury Pocket Box Watercolors, the Egal Yohani Hanbein Watercolors from Italy, Windsor Newton Professional, the Holbein Botanical Art Watercolors, the Holbein Artists Watercolor Set, the Core Watercolors, the Mijello Mission Gold Class 36 Color Set, the Mijello Pure Pigment Set 26 Colors, the Daniel Smith Extra Fine Sticks, the Daniel Smith Ultimate Mixing Set, and the Daniel Smith Essential Set. So now for our conclusion, if you are gonna ask me would I recommend the Berkeley watercolors, my answer is yes if you are a beginner, if you are a student working on some learning exercises in sketch pads and for paintings to be kept, not to be framed. But if you are an intermediate artist or much more a professional artist, I would suggest you to use some higher grade paints, artist grade paints for you to be more confident and reliable in your painting outputs. The Berkeley watercolor is really not bad for learners and beginners. In fact, I have gifted my godson a set of these on his birthday and I think he's loving it. These paints are decent enough for learning and it surely won't hurt your pocket. So I think that's all for the Berkeley watercolors review. If you have any questions, suggestions, recommendations, please just keep them coming. I'm reading them all. And yes, it took me weeks before I was able to upload again because I was really busy this last few weeks. But now I'm back and I try to upload more videos in the coming weeks. Again, this is Alan and thank you for watching. See you again next week.